Good morning. <laughs> glad to see everyone here today. So glad to have you joining us for worship. Those of you online, we're glad to have you with us as well. Why don't we rise and greet those around us with the peace of Christ. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. We recite the Ten Commandments together. You shall have no other gods. You shall not misuse the name of the Lord your God. Remember the Sabbath day by keeping it holy. Honor your father and your mother. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not give false testimony against your neighbor. You shall not covet your neighbor's house. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife 
or his manservant or maidservant, his ox or donkey, or anything that belongs to your name. We take a moment now to reflect on these Ten Commandments, our inability to keep them, and our need for the forgiveness of Christ. Let us then confess our sins to God, our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you. And for his sake, God forgives you all of your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore forgive you your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. We read the psalm responsibly. <clears throat> give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. For his steadfast love endures forever. Give thanks to the God of gods. For his steadfast love endures forever. Give thanks to the Lord of lords. For his steadfast love endures forever. To him who alone does great wonders. For his steadfast love endures forever. To him who by understanding made the heavens. For his steadfast love endures forever. To him who spread out the earth above the waters. For his steadfast love endures forever. To him who made the great lights. For his steadfast love endures forever. The sun to rule over the day. For his steadfast love endures forever the moon and stars to rule over the night. For his steadfast love endures forever. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. Please be seated.
Please rise as you're able. <clears throat> the Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray together. Heavenly Father, though we do not deserve your goodness, still you provide for all our needs of body and soul. Grant us your Holy Spirit that we may acknowledge your gifts, give thanks for all your benefits, and serve you in willing obedience. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We confess our faith with the words of the Nicene Creed. <clears throat> I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please be seated. It is time for the memory verse for the month of August. School will be starting soon, and this is the same verse that they're going to be practicing next door at the school. So we're doing this all as one big Emmanuel family. Let's recite it together. I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. 2 Timothy 4, 7 through 8. And now it's time for Miss Katie with the announcements. Good morning, everybody. Before you get too jealous that I was in Illinois last week, it was also in the upper 90s last week there, so they were very mad at me for bringing the heat up there with me. Um, but it is good to be back um, and like feel some real heat, you know? They're complaining about nothing up there. Um, we have uh, obviously quite a bit uh, happening as we move to we're just about a week and a couple days away from the start of a new school year. Um, here in town at, at all of our local schools, and so there's a lot coming up for that. Um, tomorrow, just as a reminder, the church school and ECC will all be closed for the day uh, as we take our whole staff down to camp um, to do a, a staff orientation day uh, where we'll be focusing on one section of our mission uh, and vision frame and doing some fun team building activities there as a staff. So we will be closed for that tomorrow. Um, the Dorcas Circle is meeting this week on Tuesday at their normal time. Um, this month in particular, uh, Amanda Hankemeyer, who is our zone president, uh, will be here to share about the LWML convention that uh, happened back in June. And um, so all the women of the congregation are invited to join that night and to, to hear about what happened at the convention, um, as well as what mission projects were adopted for the um, 
upcoming years. As a reminder, next Sunday we have our back to school blessing. Um, so that is for any teachers or school employees, whether it's um, administration, custodial, bus driver, kitchen. Um, if you work at a school and you serve the kids of our community in any way, um, we want to offer a blessing for you. And then students who are returning to school, we also want to offer a blessing for you. So next Sunday, whichever service you attend, um, we'll, be, we'll invite you up to uh, receive a blessing before your new school year starts. Um, a couple other things here on the sheet that are coming up, so make sure that you grab those. And then one final reminder is that because it is the first Sunday of the month, today is our door offering for church worker scholarships. So if you uh, feel moved to contribute to that, it will be appreciated uh, so that we can uh, bless and support those who, who plan to uh, pursue a career in church work. Um, with that, we will... That's the end of our announcements. We will continue our service then with our offerings. separate them from your love in Christ Jesus. Father, we give you thanks that you have blessed us beyond what we deserve and given to us your church. Bless all pastors and church workers in their service to us in your name, and bless those now considering and preparing for church work. Bless especially the workers of St. Paul Preschool in Edna, Texas, St. Luke Lutheran Church in Olney, Texas, and Trinity Lutheran Church in Keene, New Hampshire. Father, your son miraculously fed 5,000 and satisfied them. We thank you for all you provide to support our bodies and lives. Make us content with what you give, that we may not covet or turn elsewhere from what, for what comes from your hand alone. Father, we are richly and daily surrounded with your love and care. Give us eyes to see your mercies new every morning. And grant us faithful hearts that we have received, that what we have received we may generously share with the needy and with your church. 
Father, daily you bless us with abundance and freedom. Bless those who defend us from our enemies, who serve us in government, and who protect us in our communities. Be with our president, Congress, our governor, and our judges and magistrates, that they may discern the right path and lead us with honor and integrity. Father, visit us in your compassion. Deliver the sick from their infirmity, the troubled from their afflictions, the grieving from their sorrow, and the dying from their fear. Be especially with Marilyn Schmidt, Jeannie Edsel, and all those on our hearts and minds. May all who cry to you receive grace according to your will. Blessed Lord, we thank you for all whose lives are a blessing to us and praise you with all who mark special occasions in your grace. Especially James and Carolyn Mitchie who celebrate their wedding anniversary today and with Miriam Rivera, Cassidy Berry, and Randy Meachin as they celebrate their birthdays this week. Heavenly Father, you have made us stewards of many gifts that you have given to us. Guide us in our Ring the Bell program. Give us humble hearts and grant that everything we do brings glory and honor to you and none to us. Most merciful Father, without your care and preservation, all things wither and die. Open the windows of heaven and send bountiful rain on us to revive and renew the land. Your steadfast love and mercy are forever, but our faith is daily tested and tempted. Give us strength and endurance that we may not despair, but have confidence in your sufficient grace within your word and sacraments. O Lord, let us seek you while you may be found. Call upon you in the day of salvation and be prepared by your mercy for the day of judgment. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. <coughs> Lift up your hearts. We give thanks to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give and praise. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, on the night when he was betrayed took bread and when he had given thanks he broke it and gave it to his disciples saying take eat this is my body which is given for you this do in remembrance of me in the same manner also he took the cup after supper and when he had given thanks he gave it to them saying drink of it all of you this cup is the new testament in my blood shed for you for the forgiveness of sins this do as often as you drink of it in remembrance of me the peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen.
the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen and preserve you in body and soul to life everlasting. Your sins are forgiven. Depart in peace. Amen. Amen. salutary gift. And we implore you that of your mercy you would strengthen us through the same in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. <clears throat> the Old Testament reading is from Isaiah, the 55th chapter. Come, everyone who thirsts, come to the waters, and he who has no money, come, buy and eat. Come, buy wine and milk without money and without price. Why do you spend your money for that which is not bread, and your labor for that which does not satisfy? Listen diligently to me, and eat what is good, and delight yourselves in rich food. Incline your ear and come to me, hear that your soul may live. And I will make with you an everlasting covenant, my steadfast, sure love for David. Behold, I made him a witness to the peoples, a leader and commander for the peoples. Behold, you shall call a nation that you do not know, and a nation that did not know you shall run to you. Because of the Lord your God, and of the Holy One of Israel, for he has glorified you. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. The epistle reading is from Romans, the ninth chapter. I am speaking the truth in Christ. I am not lying. My conscience bears me witness in the Holy Spirit that I have great sorrow and unceasing anguish in my heart. For I could wish myself that I myself were accursed and cut off from Christ for the sake of my brothers, my kinsmen, according to the flesh. They are Israelites, and to them belong the adoption, the glory, the covenants, the giving of the law, the worship, and the promises. To them belong the patriarchs, and from their race, according to the flesh, is the Christ, who is God over all, blessed forever. Amen. But it is not as though the word of God has failed, for not all who are descended from Israel belong to Israel, and not all are children of Abraham, because they are his offspring, but through Isaac shall your offspring be named. This means that it is not the children of the flesh who are the children of God, but the children of the promise are counted as offspring. For this is what the promise said, About this time next year I will return, and Sarah shall have a son. And not only so, but also when Rebekah had conceived children by one man, our forefather Isaac, though they were not yet born and had done nothing, either good or bad, in order that God's purpose of election might continue, not because of works, but because of his call. She was told, The older will serve the younger. As it is written, Jacob I loved, but Esau I hated. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please rise for the singing of the Alleluia and the reading of the Holy Gospel. <laughs> the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 14th chapter. Now when Jesus heard about the death of John, he withdrew from there in a boat to a desolate place by himself. But when the crowds heard it, they followed him on foot from the towns. When he went ashore, he saw a great crowd, and he had compassion on them and healed their sick. Now when it was evening, the disciples came to him and said, This is a desolate place, and the day is now over. Send the crowds away to go into the villages and buy food for themselves. But Jesus said, they need not go away. You give them something to eat. They said to him, We have only five loaves here and two fish. And he said, Bring them here to me. 
Then he ordered the crowds to sit down on the grass, and taking the five loaves and the two fish, he looked up to heaven and said a blessing. Then he broke the loaves and gave them to the disciples, and the disciples gave them to the crowds. And they all ate and were satisfied. And they took up twelve baskets full of the broken pieces left over. And those who ate were about five thousand men, besides women and children. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. If any kids would like to come up and join me for a children's message, you can come on up. Good morning. How's everybody this morning? Good. Um, we just heard Pastor Han read us a story from the Gospel book of Matthew, but this story is actually one that all four of the Gospel books, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, have written in them. And it's the story of a day when Jesus fed over 5,000 people. Now, I don't know if you guys know how many 5,000 is. But, like, if you can even imagine that. But I just looked four minutes ago to double check, and the population of Giddings, Texas is 5,067 people. But the Bible tells us Jesus said 5,000 men plus women and children. So way more than 5,000 people even. So more than the people that live in Giddings, okay? That's how many people we're talking about right now. And Jesus fed them all dinner together. Do you know what they ate? Bread. Bread and fish. Bread and fish. Five loaves of bread is what the disciples were able to find, and two fish. And Jesus um, blessed that food, and, and the, the disciples gave it to the people, and over 5,000 people were able to eat dinner and have leftovers. That's pretty cool, isn't it? Now, we might think it's cool that just the, it, it, it is cool just that Jesus was able to do such a miraculous thing. It's not really surprising because we know who Jesus is. But I would argue that Jesus didn't really do that miracle for the people that were eating. He could have done what the disciples said, right? He could have sent them back into town and said, hey, you know what? It's late. You don't have to go home, but you can't stay here. Like, go, right? It's time. I got to go to bed. But he didn't. Instead, he told the disciples, no, we're going to feed these people. And so I would argue that Jesus performing this miracle was actually for the disciples to see. Everyone that was there got to witness it. But it was really the disciples who were learning something. When we read the Bible, we see Jesus spends most of his time trying to help the disciples get it, trying to help the disciples understand who he is and what he's here for and what he's about. So when he blessed this food and fed it to the people and the disciples picked up all the leftovers, they're the ones that are learning something in this moment. And, and they're learning that not only can Jesus provide for all these people, right? Have you guys ever been hungry? Are you hungry right now? No? Good. You had breakfast before you came then. So all these people are hungry. They needed some food, right? So Jesus can do that. He can provide for those needs. But what he's showing the disciples is that why these people are here is more important than the fact that they're hungry. They can stay here, okay, because I'm going to meet all of their needs. I'm going to meet more important needs than the food that they need because they're hungry. He said, these people need to know me and you need to know me and you need to understand who I am and what I'm about. And so for the disciples who have had this, this um, 
time, these, these years of traveling around with Jesus and seeing all the things that he's doing, they're still learning every single day how Jesus takes care of his people. And it's, it's meeting our, our physical needs, like food and water and clothes and a place to live and all of that. But it's also meeting our spiritual needs, what our hearts need, what our relationships with God need to be connected to him, to be loved by him, to get, have some of his time, to not have God say, oh, I'm tired, I'm gonna go to bed. And the disciples need to learn this lesson too. And we get to learn this lesson too. We know, we pray every week for God to give us the things that we need. But more importantly, God gives us that relationship with him. He gives us that salvation that was won for us through Jesus Christ. And it's a gift for us. It's something that he gives to us. He gives it to us freely. And we get to have that same experience of the disciples where we can say, whoa, I don't really understand what this guy's about, but I, I get pieces of it and I feel that he loves me and that he loves other people. So 5,000 people ate dinner, pretty cool. But even more cool, was the love that Jesus had for them and the commitment he made to take care of them and to provide for everything that they needed. So let's fold our hands and um, pray, say a prayer of thanksgiving to God. Repeat after me, dear God, thank you for sending Jesus to meet all of our needs in our bodies and our hearts. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thanks for coming up this morning. You guys can head back to your seats.
Grace and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Uh, we will be looking at, just as Katie talked about, the story here of the five loaves and the two fish, the feeding of the 5,000. Uh, and I, I want to go through a little bit verse by verse to start here, just to make sure we, we slow down and we know the story. So, um, When Jesus heard about the death of John, he withdrew from there in a boat to a desolate place by himself. But when the crowds heard it, they followed him on foot from the towns. And so, by the way, I want to start here with a little background and make sure we understand um, where we're at in the context of this story. So previous to this, previous chapters, Matthew has been uh, showing Jesus telling parables, right? We did this one last week uh, with with the parable of the... um, uh, the lost treasure, the parable of the lost pearl, and uh, in all of that, Jesus was trying to teach folks what the kingdom of God was like and the grace and mercy that flows from it. Um, in this chapter, all of a sudden, we start with this story. You notice we're at verse 13, and so these previous 12 verses, uh, we, we read of the death of John the Baptist, somebody that Jesus was close to. In verse 13, we indicate Jesus is impacted by this, right? He heard about the death of John, and he withdrew. He wanted to be alone. He needed this time away. But what happens? The people follow him. When he went ashore, he saw a great crowd. So he's cut across the lake. He comes to this. The great crowd is there. He has compassion on them, and he healed their sick, okay? Now, when it was evening, so he's doing all this, the disciples come in and say, this is a desolate place, the day is now over. Send the crowds away to go into the villages and buy food for themselves. And you see this bit highlighted. I want you to take note and just tuck this in the back of your head for a minute. The disciples' response to seeing these crowds, Jesus continuing to work, the disciples' response is, send them away. They're going to need food. They're going to need their own stuff. We're tired. We want to rest too, no doubt. Send them away. Let them go take care of themselves. Let somebody else worry about this. But Jesus said, they need not go away. You give them something to eat. He said to him, we have only five loaves here and two fish. And he said, bring them here to me. Then he ordered the crowds to sit down, taking the five loaves and the two fish. He looked up to heaven, said a blessing. Then he broke the loaves, gave them to the disciples, and the disciples gave the food to the crowds. They ate, they all ate. Crowd disciples Jesus, I'm assuming. When it says all, everybody that we've heard about so far. Everybody ate and were satisfied. They took up 12 basketfuls of broken pieces left over. And those who ate were 5,000 men besides women and children. There's a lot happening here. And I want us to slow down even more. I'm going to highlight a few more things. So let's go back. Jesus withdrew. First thing I want you to see in this as we, as we read the story to see where Jesus is at. And Jesus was tired, right? This, this points to some of the stuff that we would talk about, uh, maybe in confirmation about Jesus being true God, but also that he is true. He's true man. He has been working all day, pouring into the lives of people, teaching. And now, right, the death of John has impacted him and he wants to be alone. Have we been there? Right? We've been there. We want to go be alone. But the needs of whatever, the family, the community, the crowd shows up, and we got to keep going. So, but Jesus withdraws. I want you to see that. Okay? And what happens? He, the crowds get there, and I want you to see he saw them. And this may seem like a, just a, a, a glancing fact. He looked out and he saw the people. But if you just saw a crowd of people, eh, okay, great. The seeing that Jesus does leads to a reaction within him. Right? He saw them, and what was his reaction? He has compassion. There's something that Jesus has to see to provoke this reaction within him. He sees this people that he has been teaching about the kingdom of God, this people that have been, well, he sees that they're sick. There's some physical needs here, right? And often, and part of what we're going to see today is that while Jesus, and, and Katie touches on this, while we see Jesus certainly taking care of spiritual needs, heart needs that we have, you're going to see Jesus as he's here connecting all of that together, 
that spiritual needs and physical needs are important. I want you to think about it this way. As we think about Jesus saving us, what has he saved us from? He has saved us from from sin, from death, and from the devil. And is there a physical component of that for you? A bodily component to that? Absolutely. He has saved you, body and soul, to live with him eternally, for your body to be renewed. So I want you to see first big point today that as Jesus sees the crowds, as he has compassion, there is a physicalness to this because he has redeemed us body and soul. These bodies are important to Jesus. They are important to God. And he cares and he provides. And you're going to see that in a big way today. Right? He has compassion on them. Now, I love, again, here's the disciples' reaction. Um, let me make sure I get the right slide here. 14. I've got to get my eyes on to see all this. Okay. Let's go back to the disciples' reaction. The disciples saw the crowd. Actually, they didn't even say they saw them. Right? We assume they saw them with their eyes, saw but did not see. What do the disciples want to do to the crowd? What did you want to do to the crowd? The disciples, what did you want to do? Send them on. The crowds are here. They have needs. Let them go take care of themselves. Right? This is a desolate place. Jesus doesn't let them off the hook. They don't need to go away. You give them something to eat. And this response, kind of typical of followers of Jesus or God's people all too often, right? It makes me think about when uh, Adam gets blamed, right? Adam gets blamed for beating, eating the apple. What does he say to God? Oh, the woman you, that you gave me, she, she gave me the apple. That was her fault. And she says, no, no, it's the serpent. And everybody else passes the blame. No, Jesus, we can't keep them here. They've got to go away. We don't have enough. I'm not equipped to do this. I've only got five loaves of bread and two fish. Maybe they didn't know the exact count at this point, right? But we, uh, as he approaches them, he says, bring it to me. I only got five loaves of bread and two fish. We can't possibly feed them. I can't possibly feed them, the group says. So you see the back and forth. Jesus sees the people. He has compassion. He heals them. The disciples, the followers saw the people, said, send them away. Jesus says, no, you take care of it. But we can't. Jesus says, gets even more detail, bring them to me, okay? Jesus says, bring them to me. That's not passing on here. Here we go. Bring them here to me. And he orders the crowd to sit down, taking the five loaves. And I love this. He looks up to heaven and says a blessing. He acknowledges perhaps the Father, right? This is what Jesus has done as we see him go aside to pray. As he takes time, he looks up to heaven. He offers the, bre- the blessing. He broke the loaves and gave them to the disciples. And notice here, that is language that should be ringing in our ears a bit. This takes us back to Old Testament times at the Passover when the bread was broken. It harkens forward to things that's going to happen at the Last Supper where Jesus breaks the bread. There's a continuation here as God provides, right? He breaks the bread as he looks up to heaven. He gives it to the disciples and the disciples give it to the crowds. And I want you to see the sequence here. Jesus, we got to send them away. They need food. No, you do it. We don't have enough. Jesus says, come here. You can almost hear a little exasperation. Bring him to me. He blesses the food. He offers as he looks up to God. He gives to the disciples, the disciples give to them. And what was the result? This is where we get to the good part. And they all ate and were satisfied. The people said, we can't do this. We don't have enough to take care of them. Jesus says, bring what you got. And Jesus takes whatever we have. He took whatever they had, that little bit, the five loaves and the two fish, and he blesses it, and he goes out and they feed everybody. 
and everyone is satisfied. The disciples, the people, and Jesus, I'm sure too, full. I want you to see in the story that as Jesus saw the crowds, he had compassion. And that all too often as we see the crowds, we're ready to push them away. Go take care of yourself. You do the work. You've got to do the work to get something for this, right? And that's an all too often thing that we say. There's not much moment, not as often as I I should say, for our compassionate reactions. Jesus saw he had compassion. The disciples pushed back. And yet Jesus invited and he blessed and he satisfied the people. You see that? He saw them. He had compassion. He invited them. He blessed them. And they were satisfied. It's all too often easy for us as we think about this to see that it's just that we, that we could. And to be honest, the first time I talked with Pastor Josh about this sermon to see that uh, this is good, right? We can talk about the gospel. And what do you have to give to people? You have the gospel. And that's true. But I want you to see here that especially part of this is just taking care of people's physical needs. That salvation and the physicalness of our world are all tied together because it was a Jesus body, flesh, and blood that died on the cross for people to redeem people, flesh, and blood. To redeem you physically, not just in some spiritual sense. And in the meantime, Jesus does provide for physical needs. And we see this here today. He saw the needs of the people. He had compassion. He healed their sicknesses. He saw them and had compassion and he fed them. And I want you to see today that all too often we believe that we are ill-equipped or we're not able to take care of the people around us. And we use that, honestly, much as the disciples did today, as an excuse not to help. To not see people the same way Jesus did. To have some excuse But I want you to see the mercy and grace that Jesus had as he did indeed teach the disciples today. To rely on him. The people had no idea. I have no doubt that they were completely ignorant of what had just transpired. But the disciples saw everything behind the scenes. They saw that they had five loaves and two fishes. And somehow, and it's not a mystery, it's through Jesus through Jesus' blessing of what they had, the little bit that they had, that everything was taken care of. That in his compassion, he fed the people, he fed the disciples. For us to trust. But I, well, to see, first of all, that you're right, I don't have what it takes. I don't have the gifts or the resources for whatever com- need I see within the community, whether it's within our church community or the, or the needs of the outdoor community. But that as we bring whatever we have to Jesus, he blesses it as it's to his purposes. He blesses it to his purposes and he provides and everyone was satisfied. There is a call here for us to trust Jesus at the, at the, at the moments of greatest need, to go out in faith, even when we feel we're ill-equipped, and to trust that he will provide all that is necessary. My hope is that just as the disciples were amazed at what Jesus had done, that you too, by faith, will grow to see and depend and rest on Jesus, just as we have for our salvation, that in all physical needs, that we take the, the meager resources perhaps that we have, or maybe the great resources we have, that we go to our communities, to those in need, and provide as Jesus has compassion on on them, as he has had compassion on us. In Jesus' name, amen. And the peace of God then, which surpasses all understanding, may keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus from now to life everlasting. Amen. Please rise. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace.